Hi, my name is Jonathan. Welcome back to the channel. And here we have a new flashlight to review. This is the Nightcore TM20K and it's their most powerful flashlight yet. Let's have a closer look. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. At the time of filming, this flashlight or torch, as we like to call them in the UK, is on pre-order. But Nightcore were good enough to send me one out early for this review. So this is the TM20K. TM stands for Tiny Monster. And it is an extremely powerful flashlight at 20,000 lumens. They describe it as an ultra high performance tactical searchlight. And for a flashlight this powerful, it's actually quite compact and it does have a unique form factor. Cue the music. As you can see, it's an unusual shape because it thins down where you hold it and that allows for a really good grip. It feels really good quality like all Nightcore flashlights and it's made from aircraft grade aluminium and it has a type three hard anodized finish and it also has optical glass, which is anti-reflective. It can also tail stand, which is a great feature because you can bounce the light off the ceiling and light up a whole room. It has cooling fins here, and these are really needed. This thing gets really hot when it's on maximum power. It has an LED array here of 18 LEDs around the perimeter and one in the center here. The one in the center is at the base of a deep reflector. This is where the beam comes from. The perimeter LEDs are for a floodlight. Each of these perimeter LEDs has a very small reflecting surface. So this relies on the quantity of LEDs to provide that huge 20,000 lumen output. It has a hole through here, which is big enough for this 550 paracord wrist strap. And then interestingly here, we have a belt clip. Now you don't normally get a belt clip on a light, which is this powerful, like this Immolent MS06. You just don't get a belt clip on these because it's just too heavy and too chunky. But with this unique flat sided design, you can incorporate this belt clip and this belt clip works really well. It's really substantial and it's pretty unique on a flashlight of this size. And not to be outdone, it still comes with a holster if that's your preferred way of carrying it. And it fits in there like that. It has this magnetic closure here and it has a Velcro belt loop there and also a loop to attach to a carabiner or something like that. It's got a hole in the bottom of the holster which means if you switch it on accidentally when putting it into the holster, you can see that it's still on so you don't inadvertently flatten the battery. I'm not a massive fan of this holster. I think it looks a little bit odd. So my preference would be probably to abandon that and just rely on this pocket clip. On the back here, we have all the switch gear and I say switch gear because there are actually four switches here. Let's quickly run through them. On the bottom here, we have the mode switch, which is also a lockout switch. And there's two modes to choose from. We have a daily mode and a tactical mode. Then we have a power on and off switch. Then we have a tactical ambidextrous switch. And by that, it's got two sides to it and they both perform the same function and it can be used irrespective of which way up the flashlight is or which hand it's in. So your thumb just needs to move to the middle there and it will always land on that button. Then we have a USB-C charging port and this switch they call a mode button. So let's have a look at the operation. Okay, so here we have the lockout mode and as you can see, it's in the position of the padlock, which means it's locked out. And then you've got one and two, which is modes one and two. Mode one is the daily mode and that's the one we're gonna look at first. So this is an early example of this flashlight and the firmware has changed slightly. So for this one, I just need to turn it to mode one and it can be switched on and off. 
In the production version, it's going to be slightly different. They've taken an extra step for safety to make sure it's not accidentally knocked. Now, how you would accidentally knock it from locked to position one or two and then press it on, I don't know. But they're being extra cautious to make sure it doesn't come on accidentally. And in order to make it operational in the production version, you have to press the mode button and then move it into either mode one or two. So the way it works is pretty simple. Once it's operational in mode one, you simply press the power button and it comes on. And then you press the mode button and you can cycle through four settings. That's ultra low, low, medium and high. And then once you've got your chosen light level, when you turn it off, it memorizes that. When you turn it on, it comes on at that last used light level. So that's all really good. Then you've got the tactical buttons here and that just puts it straight into 20,000 lumen floodlight mode and it's always under your thumb so you could be at your chosen light level suddenly want to light up the world press that button and off we go and it doesn't matter whether the flashlight is on or off at this point unless it's in lockout mode press the tactical button and the floodlight mode will come on let's see that in action it is blindingly bright. So the thing to point out here is that the 20,000 lumen mode is for instantaneous use only. It's not designed to be on for any length of time. If you do hold that tactical mode button down, this thing gets super hot really quickly and then the automatic temperature regulation will kick in and drop the power down automatically. And then we have another mode which adds a little bit of complexity and that is when you have it on so i've got it on now at ultra low if i press and hold the mode button it switches to what they call floodlight mode and it's basically the perimeter leds are on not the center led and that's just to light up a broad area if you press and hold it it cycles through floodlight and then spotlight so now i've got it on spotlight mode and it's just the center led on at high brightness and then you press the mode button and it starts cycling through the four modes again the floodlight and spotlight modes are also memorized so if you have it in say the floodlight mode switch it off when you switch it on again it will be back in the floodlight mode there is an option to choose a strobe light instead of the turbo and to do that you press on the turbo a quick press on the mode button and we now have a random strobe designed to confuse an attacker i can't see me opting for the strobe mode too often so i would always keep it on the turbo mode so to switch it back to turbo mode press the tactical button and a quick press on the mode button and we are now back in turbo mode so let's now look at mode two which is the tactical mode and the real difference here is the on off switch here which normally toggles on and off goes to an instantaneous on so it's push to activate and when you let go the flashlight goes off so the operation is quite similar to mode one when the light is on which you now need to press and hold you can step through the four light levels with the mode button when you let go it goes off the turbo mode operates in the same way through the tactical switch press and hold and it comes on and this can also be a strobe mode what you don't get is the separate floodlight and spotlight options that you get in mode one so let's have a look at the charts for this flashlight so we can get an idea of the different light levels and their associated run times first thing to know is that the maximum range is 290 meters which is not a huge range for what is described as a searchlight and you can see why it's got a relatively small reflector and a single led in there which is not particularly huge and don't forget that 290 meter range is based on the fl1 anti standard which in practical terms is more like 75 meters range and my view is and we'll find out when we go outside that this flashlight is more about the floodlight than the spotlight just looking at the four main modes ultra low low mid and high and the brightness is 320 lumens at ultra low which is still quite high for an ordinary flashlight then we have low 1050 mid is 1900 high is 3100 lumens you'll notice the 45 minute run time has an asterisk next to it which means that it will not maintain that light level if it gets hot and if it gets to a certain temperature, then it will drop the power so it doesn't overheat. 
The turbo is dramatically different from all the other light levels at 20,000 lumens. There's no runtime for that because it's not designed to run continuously. It's designed to be used intermittently and it does get very hot very quickly. I've noticed that ultra low only uses the central LED and then when you get to low, it switches on the perimeter LEDs and they ramp up in brightness through mid and high levels. At turbo, everything's on at maximum brightness. The spotlight mode only has the center LED, but ramped up more than ultra low at 1200 lumens. So that's your brightest single spotlight mode that can run for three hours and 30 minutes. The separate floodlight mode at 1800 lumens can run for two hours continuously and that switches on everything but the center LED. As you can see, the strobe is at maximum power as well, which is 20,000 lumens. So that's super bright. And if you want to understand more about the range and the candela and lumens of a flashlight, then I would urge you to watch my video, which I will link to at the end of this video that explains the relationship between all those elements. And that information is really useful to know when it comes to buying a flashlight. And trying to work out whether it's just the center LED or the perimeter LEDs in the different light modes is harder than you might think because it's so damn bright. So what I was doing is shining it through a thick jumper to try and see what LEDs were being illuminated. And I realized in the high light levels that my jumper was actually smoking. So that is an indication of how hot this can get in the high brightness modes. And you'll also notice from this chart that it has an IPX8 or IP68 rating, which means it can be submerged up to two meters for half an hour without doing any damage. And it's got a drop test rating of one meter, which means it can be dropped onto a concrete surface from a distance of one meter at all sorts of different angles. So it's a very robust flashlight for something so big and heavy. Okay, let's have a quick look at the batteries and the charging. In here, there are two 21700 lithium ion batteries delivering 9,600 milliamp hours. The thing to note is that they are not removable. They are sealed within this unit. And there is a way in which you can check the battery power remaining in this flashlight, but it's not that good. The way to do it is you press the mode button once when the light is off, and then it tells you through one, two, three, three volts, and then it tells you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three point eight volts. Is three point eight volts remaining in the batteries here? What does that mean? No idea. Uh, there's nothing to compare it with. There's nothing I've found that says three point eight volts will last for one hour on the middle mode. And even if it did, trying to remember that would be crazy. And it's a real shame here they haven't included a feature that I found in some Nightcore lights, which is their OLED display, which shows you how long each mode will actually last in real time. It's a real shame it's not there because I don't see a lot of value in that information from here. There is another more practical way of understanding when the battery level is running low, and that's with the blue light here when the flashlight is on. When it's on continuously, that indicates that the battery level is above 50%. When it's flashing slowly, that indicates that the battery life has dropped below that, and if it drops below 10%, it flashes quickly. In terms of charging, the good news is it uses USB-C and it can be quick charged. So if your battery charger has a quick charge mode, you can charge this flashlight in four and a half hours. Otherwise you'll be limited to seven and a half hours. Some of the large flashlights like this Emelant MS-06 has a bespoke magnetic battery charging lead. And that's something I'm not a fan of because it means you've got to remember to take their lead with you. And if you forget it, then you're not going to be able to charge your light. And if it goes faulty, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to charge it either. Whereas a USB-C is standard, it means you're probably going to have one with you anyway. So USB-C is great to see on a flashlight this size. 
couple of other specifications. The length on this flashlight is 145 millimeters, which is just over five and a half inches. The diameter is 50 mil, which is 1.97 inches. And the weight is 422 grams, which is 4.89 ounces and not too heavy for a flashlight of this size and this power. So the time has come whilst you sit at home in the warmth for me to wander out into the cold and dark and into the scary woods to test out this flashlight. So here we have ultra low and if this can operate at this level for 13 hours it's a very usable flashlight. Then we have low, medium, high and then turbo. At the time of recording, it's not yet been released to the market. I believe the price is going to be $299. So it's not a low cost option, but it is a very high quality option. And if these features meet your needs, then there's very little else like it. So in conclusion, I really like it. The quality is great. The form factor is unique and really nice, particularly with this belt clip here. So you don't need a holster. The lanyard's really nice. The switch gear is great. So you have a different switch for each function, which means it's really easy to learn and really easy to use. Use your thumb to switch it on, use your finger to click through the modes and the side of your thumb to switch into turbo. So everything falls into place. Got these nice grip indentations here. So whether you use it in a tactical grip, that works. Or if you have it in a traditional grip, that works as well. Then you've got the benefit of being able to lock it out. I think that's really important, particularly with these powerful flashlights that get super hot. If you're looking for a long range search light, then this isn't really going to do it. But certainly shorter range flood lighting to light up the whole area around you, particularly in short bursts. This is perfect for that. The 13 hour 320 lumen ultra low mode is still very bright and could get you out of a problem if you find yourself a long way from home. So that's really good to have. Then you've got the four main modes that are very easy to step through. And then the other two modes, which I don't find a great deal of use for. I think the four modes and the turbo is probably enough for most people. But if you do need a single spotlight mode, you've got that. And if you do need that floodlight mode without any center lighting, you've got that as well. And so as you can probably tell, I really like the TM20K from Nightcore. As promised, here is a link to my video which explains what to look for if you are thinking about buying a flashlight. That's it for this video. Thank you as always for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.